So we're starting unit eight, which is called logarithmic functions, and starts with 8.1, which is called understanding logarithms. That's on pages 372 to 382 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is 30.9, where we need to demonstrate an understanding of logarithms, including evaluating logarithms, which we'll talk about today. Relating logarithms to exponents, we'll also talk about, about that today. Deriving laws of logarithms and solving equations and graphing, which we will touch on a bit today too. Lesson objectives. Number one, we need to learn how exponential and logarithmic functions are related to one another. Number two, we need to learn how to evaluate logarithms. Number three, we need to learn what the graph of a logarithm function looks like, a logarithmic function, sorry, looks like, and find its characteristics. And four, we need to be able to answer some basic logarithmic equations. So you need to recall from lesson 1.4 what the inverse of a function actually is because that's what we'll be talking about today. So it is when you switch the x and the y in an equation and you solve for y. So for example, the inverse of y equals 2x minus 5 is y equals 0.5x plus 2.5. So let's, I'll show you how we did this. If you don't remember, we just switched the x and the y. So this now becomes x equals 2y minus 5. And now we have to solve for y. So that means we move the 5 to the other side. So we get x plus five on the left hand side and we get 2y over here and then to solve for y we just divide them both by 2. So that now becomes a half or 0.5x and that becomes 5 divided by 2 which is 2 and a half, 2.5. So if we were to graph both these things on the same equation here's what it looks like. This first equation, the red equation, is or the red line here has a y-intercept of negative 5 so we're looking at this would be y equals 2x minus 5 and the blue one is the oops the blue one happens to be the 0.5x plus 25 2.5 sorry so let's take a look at these things if you remember our studies of inverses of functions and the inverse of a function then would have two points that are exactly well one point which is exactly the same and that happens to be at this point, which is uh, when x equals, it looks like it's about 5. And y equals 5 for both those things. That's the only point that doesn't switch. Um, and the other main thing about inverses of functions is that if you drew an imaginary line, y equals x, it should split this thing in half, these two graphs. And it looks like the blue line and the red line are reflections of one another in this imaginary line y equals x. So those are just things that we've learned about inverses of functions already this term. So the reason that we're talking about inverses of functions is because a logarithmic function happens to be the inverse of an exponential function. So recall that an exponential function from last unit is y equals c to the x. So that means that the inverse of this function would then be x equals c to the y. Now the problem is, how do we solve for y when it's in the exponent? And there isn't really an um, algebraic way to do that until we apply some, something called a logarithm. So if we change this equation to solve for y, it actually looks like this. It says y equals log c to the x, or c and then x. Remember that this is the same thing as x equals c to the y. It's just written in a different way. So I'll do a little translation in English for you. What this really is saying is what exponent y, because that's what we have here, y and y, um, is, do I give to my base, which happens to be c, right there and there. So I get my answer, which happens to be x. So again, what uh, what exponent y do I give to my base c to get my answer x? So let's do a couple examples. We're going to evaluate the following logarithms. So log 2, 8 is then saying what exponent do I give 2 to get 8? And so the answer to that question would then be 3 because 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. Log 3, 81 means what exponent do I give 3 in order to get 81? So the answer to this question would be 4, because 3 to the power of 4 is equal to 81. So if you can do a little translation into English, that really, really um, helps you solve any sort of, uh, evaluate, I guess, any logarithms. Log 9, 9. So the question is, what exponent do I give 9 to get 9? And the answer to that is 1. 
If you need to, you could rewrite it. So this could be written as like two to the power of what gives me eight. If you really need to do that, two to the power of what gives me eight. And you could write it like this. That would be like three to the power of what gives me 81 or nine to the power of what gives me nine. So that's just the way that you would write them if you wanted to write them instead of logarithmic form into exponent form. We'll do a few more. Um, what exponent do I give three to get an answer of one ninth? You have to remember that we can give things, uh, we can give bases negative exponents. So the answer to this is negative two because three to the power of negative two is equal to a ninth. How about this question it says, what exponent do I give five to get an answer of negative 25? And hopefully, hopefully if you think about that for a few minutes, you might realize that there is no answer. Because when we give an exponent or a base, sorry, an exponent, so five to the power of what gives me negative 25, no exponent in the world will allow you to turn a positive base into a negative number. It just doesn't happen. Exponents only increase numbers or decrease numbers, but they never change the sign on a number. And finally, log 10 of 1,000 would then be what um, exponent do I give 10 to get 1,000? And that answer would be 3. So let's do a quick little calculator check. Your calculator can help you with logarithms. However, it only works if the base of your function is 10. So you can use your log button on your calculator, but your base needs to be 10. So for example, well, these are called lo common logarithms, sorry. And for example, this one that we just answered, the log 10, 1000. Now, what we can do is we can just write log 1000 into our calculator. The 10, we don't have to write at all. So whenever it's a base 10, we just assume that we don't have to write it at all. So this is log of 1000. And when you type that into your calculator, you'll find that your answer is three. So if you're gonna use the log button in your calculator, it only works if your base is 10. Now, eventually in this course, we'll show you how to change uh, every question so you have a base of 10. So you can use your log button on your calculator a lot. But for now, just remember you can't use it unless your base is 10. We're gonna do a little graphing check as well. So if a logarithmic function is the inverse of an exponential function, then it should follow some of the same characteristics that other inverse functions have, like we looked at earlier on in this lesson. All right, so here's our two functions. I've, I've graphed the blue function for you, which is f of x equals two to the x. Now this should look familiar. Um, notice that it has an x or y intercept, sorry, of uh, zero comma one. And if we were to make a table of values, we could just plug in values for x and we get values for y. So like when x equals zero, y equals one. When x equals one, y equals two. When x equals two, y equals four, etc. So that follows an exponential form. Now for logs, a little bit different. It's our red function here. So when our base is two, then when we choose numbers to plug into this thing, we need to be careful. So if we, we can't plug in a value of zero because you can't say um, what exponent do I give two to get a zero. There's nothing, no exponent that you can raise two to to get an answer of zero. So this function never crosses the y axis because you can't put an exponent in here that will make it equal to zero. So the next question is, okay, so what exponent do I put in there to make this thing equal to one? And the answer to that is two to the power of zero. So if we have a one here, then our answer is zero. So that's why the X intercept one comma zero is on this function. Next thing is, okay, so what um, log two, the next thing I'd replace this number with is two. So what exponent do I give two to get an answer of two? And that would be one. So two comma one, there it is on our graph. Um, the next number that I would plug in here, maybe if you're catching on to the pattern, I wouldn't plug a three in here, but I'd plug a four. So what exponent do I give two to get an answer of four? And that answer is two, so four comma two. So remember that your X value is here and your Y value is your answer. And that, you can plot all those points. The next point that you'll probably see is um, eight comma three. So like log two, eight. So what exponent do I give eight? Or do I give two, sorry, to get an eight? And that would be three. 
log 2, 16 is also on here. What exponent would I give 2 to get an answer of 16? Well, that would be 4. So there's a height of 4. So that's how you can graph a logarithmic function. Now let's notice that these two things are inverse of each other. And we had just finished talking about inverses earlier on in this unit. And, notice, and remember that they're, they're supposed to be an imaginary line at y equals x. And hopefully you can see that it's like these two functions are like they're a reflection in this imaginary line, which essentially makes them inverses of each other. So if you know how to find the exponential function like we took last unit, then you should be able to find um, what the logarithmic function looks like, or at least have a better understanding of what a logarithmic function looks like. So let's take a look at the characteristics of a logarithmic function. So the first thing is we're going to take a look at the intercepts. So we've already talked about why it will never cross the y-axis because you cannot remember that this is two to the power of something. You can't give two an exponent that'll make it equal zero. It just doesn't exist. So there's no y-intercept. The x-intercept appears to be at one comma zero. Now, is this going to be the same for every logarithmic function? Let's take a look. So at 1 comma 0, that means that your x value here is going to be 1. So if I ask my myself the question, what exponent do I give 3 instead of 2? What exponent do I give 3 to get an answer of 1? Well, that's going to be 0, because 3 to the power of 0 is 1. What if it was log 7? So what exponent do I give 7 to get an answer of 1? Well, that answer is also 0. Because it doesn't matter what number you put in as your base, the thing that will give you an answer of 1 is always going to be an exponent of zero. So every logarithmic function will have an x-intercept of one comma zero. So let's talk about the domain of this thing. Well, if, the, if you graph this function, you'll find out that this red line gets really, 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 really close to the y-axis, but it never touches it. So your domain would be that x is going to be everything that's greater than zero. It's not equal to zero because it can't touch that uh, that horizontal line or the vertical line sorry the y-axis so it's going to be everything that's greater than zero your range your range goes on forever though this function although it, it looks like it stops increasing or it gets the rate of increase slows down it will continue going on forever up and it will continue going on forever down so your range is going to be y e r it's going to be all your values for y and finally, is there any asymptotes in this thing? Well, yes, there is a vertical asymptote this time. Exponential functions had a horizontal asymptote. And since we're talking about the inverse of that sort of thing, so it would be a vertical asymptote. So we've got a vertical asymptote at y equals zero. Sorry, at x equals zero. That vertical line, the y-axis is at x equals zero. So if you need to estimate a logarithm, uh, you can simply use uh, the old guess and check mixed in with a little bit of common sense method. Okay, so I'll give an example here. It says estimate the value of log 350. So you need to have the skill that you can create or change log 350 into an exponent or an exponential equation. So that's just saying 3 to the power of what gives me 50. So right off the bat, I know that 3 to the power of 3 is 27. And I know that 3 to the power of 4 is 81. And I know that 50 is somewhere between 27 and 81. So I at least have narrowed down what my exponent is going to be. It's going to be between 3 and 4. So I go smack dab in the middle, pull out the old calculator, and I give it a try. I find that 3 to the power of 3.5 is 46.7. So that's pretty close. So I'll try the next logical number. It's not quite big enough, so I'll go to 3 to the power of 3.6. And I find out that that is 52.2. Neither one of these are really close enough to 50 because this is math and we want to try and be in as exact as possible. So I go smack dab between 3.5 and 3.6. That's 3 to the power 3.55. And I find out that, that is 49.4. So I'm getting closer. It's still not close enough. So I'll um, go 3.56 as my exponent and I get an answer of 49.95, and that is pretty darn close to 50. So that means that x equals 3.56. So in summary, a logarithmic function is the inverse of an exponential function. 
And that means their graphs are also the inverse of each other. That means that uh, they should both be reflected in that invisible line y equals x because you have switched the x and the y values around. That's what the inverse means. The basic form of a logarithmic function is y equals log cx. And remember that this can just be translated in what exponent y do I give my base c in order to get my answer, which is x. Common logarithms have a base of 10. And remember that we don't have to write them in. So if I said log of 100, if I punch log of 100 into my calculator, that's assuming that the base is 10. So the answer should be 2. If I punched in log of, say, 50 into my calculator, you would get a number that's decimal because 50 can't be written as 10 to the power of something. And your calculator is set up for common logarithms. It's not set up for any other sort of logarithms. And you need to know that the graph of a basic logarithmic function has the following characteristics. There are no y-intercepts. There is an x-intercept at 1, 0. doesn't matter what logarithmic function it is. The x-intercept will always be 1, 0. The y-axis is a vertical asymptote. And the domain is always x is greater than 0, while the range is always x, e, r. So your assignment's on page 380 to 382. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.